so happy to see you again. Um, I am coming to you live and talking to you from the atrium of the Philip Weltner Library. Um, it is so strange to be in here, but fantastic. I did have my mask on colors up until seconds ago and now um, got permission since there is zero person in here right now we're closing it too um, the library's closing it too to take that off but I'm here in front of the Alejandro Aguilera sculpture which um, was given to us in 2013 um, in uh, 2013 by Shelley and Donald Rubin um, Donald Rubin is uh, Oglethorpe alumnus, class of 56, who uh, in 2013 also gave us an extraordinary gift um, to Oglethorpe uh, to support an exhibition series in perpetuity and to allow for educational programming for students um, related to that series and to other, um, to other adventures and we're incredibly grateful to them. Mm -hmm. So um, what can I tell you about Aguilera? Well, first of all, let me just give you a little scale here because I'm standing in front of the sculpture. I'm gonna step back next to it and you'll see how just enormous this is. I'm 5'5", five five. okay, bear in mind. Take a look here. All right, life size. We've got a life size sculpture and it's up on a large plinth, okay? So let me just show you down below give you a sense of the scale of this, these three pieces with a smaller uh, accompanying piece. I don't want to move the camera around too much, but this is kind of um, toward the end of my little talk. I'm going to walk back to the sculpture and show you a little bit behind it. So let's see, Alejandro Aguilera, lovely person, fantastic artist, born in Cuba in the 1960s and um, has been a resident of Atlanta since the 90s. He studied both here and in Cuba. Uh, he studied in um, his hometown of Holguin and also in Havana and also had a postgraduate fellowship at um, Massachusetts College of Art in Boston. Um, he was instrumental in the sculpture movement in Havana in the 80s. Um, very, very, very in instrumental in that. His work is in the National Museum of Fine Arts, also the National Council for Arts in Havana. Um, the High Museum uh, right here in Atlanta, several other um, U.S. Uh, institutions, and also the uh, Ludwig Forum for International Art in Germany. Let's see, what can I tell you about this piece? So, brief history of usage. I'm already three minutes into my five minutes. Ah! Um, it was created in 2007, and in the left figure, the one that's seated um, over here, is Anna. And that's meant to represent Ana Albertina Delgado Alvarez, who is contemporary and a friend of the artist, of Aguilera. She's based now in Miami, um, does very personal work. The person on the right is meant to be is Maria, and that's meant to be Maria Izquierda, who was a contemporary of Frida Kahlo and is a Mexican artist. Um, Ana Albertina Delgado Alvarez, forgive my Spanish pronunciation again, um, is a Cuban uh, American artist. The center figure is called attraction. An attraction is, according to the artist, meant to be a patron saint of artists who have passed, artists from Mexico, Cuba, uh, and the US who have taken their own lives, unfortunately. And the, there's clay that's impacted in the back of the sculpture and in the front in certain areas that represents their burial sites. And you'll see names on there. And behind the piece, inserted throughout, are spices, Georgia red clay, vanilla, corn, cinnamon, yellow root anise, and marjoram. So the next time you are in the Oglethorpe University Library, and you can come through here, take a peek behind the sculpture and see. Um, stylistically, Aguilera cites inspiration from literary sources, also from both contemporary and traditional sources, um, including artists Louise Nevelson and Marisol Escobar. And I'm just going to walk with you for my last minute here to show you a little more closely. Let's see, there are several of you here. The clay that's in here. And names of people. Carrie, um, Ophelia, Acosta. And then the pictures that are in, in within each person is actually an image of the other artist. So in Anna is Maria, and in Maria is Anna. And all throughout the back, there's clay. 
There's bits of star anise. Maybe too hard to see back there. And all kinds of objects that are embedded within these pieces. So that would be our five minutes. I think I'm almost a minute over five minute museum for today. Thank you so much for tuning in. Tune in again Tuesdays at 2 next week. Both John Daniel Tilford and I will be coming to you as we install uh, Pax Tokugawa, the Japanese exhibition that we will, will um, have open by the 2nd of April in honor of our dear friend, the late uh, Robert Steen. Thanks so much, everybody.